I didn't know until the film came, until we went to a screening. I said, oh God, they can kind of see through my shirt. Yeah, but you were cold. I remember it was wet Please. and cold, and that was a job. It was like, you know, we weren't worried about so much. Oh, Anything. Oh, you know, if you got to hit your marks, you got to make it look right. You want to get it in one take if you could, because you don't want to keep doing it and doing it in the, in the rain. But And I remember our stunt girl came in, the devil, and she says, I can't take off my yeah. I said, I says, well, I don't know. I think you have to. And we were just kidding her, because, you know, she, you're not going to see her from the front anyway. It's a stunt girl. So we, we gave her a hard time for about a half hour about, oh, yeah, you're going to take all that stuff off. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay, leave it on. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of a lot of running in the they had rain machines. It wasn't really raining, but the rain machines, it's like much more rain than real rain, and the drops are very thick because they're they're coated with silk. Uh, well, something. just it's just heavy, heavy, heavy rain. rain, and they re, they use towers. They they use these big pipes, big. and they're up there ten feet, and to see rain on film, it takes a lot. A lot of so rain. it's a drenching, huge rain. And the drops are not like water. They were very heavy. You could feel yeah. every drop. So there were a lot of them. And it was about 30, because we shot at night, overnight. So it was about 30 degrees. We'll have one more question. I'm going to turn it over to you guys. So start thinking of fun questions. But um, Tom, not playing Jason just wasn't enough for you, because you've played Leatherface <laughs> and Michael Myers as well. well yeah. <laughs> what is that like? Because I believe you're one of the only actors to do that? Well, yeah, Doug Tate has done both Michael and Jason, so he's uh, actually tied with me. I did the uh, Leatherface when I was doing Chainsaw 2, and if you saw the, the movie, uh, Chainsaw 2, uh, in the movie, there's a... Uh, I think he, he was the radio station manager, cowboy guy, and Leatherface broke through a door, knocked him down some stairs over a rail onto his desk. He fell off the desk and then Chop Top killed him with a hammer. So that was a pretty good stunt. That's what I was there to do. I was doubling this guy. So when I got to the set, it was uh, late in the day, and Bob Elmore, who's the stuntman who was doing Leatherface, he'd been working all day, and they've had some long days before he even got there. And he's using this chainsaw. He's standing on the edge of the pickup truck in that scene where he's going backwards over the bridge, cutting out the the uh, the convertible on the on the sports car. And uh, his arm was hurting him. And, and the coordinator then says to me, he says, "Listen, we got another shot we need to take here. Can you jump up in this stuff and do this for Bob? His arm's really hurting him." He's, yeah, oh, all right, I'll, I'll do one. So I did this take. And like I said to other people in the past, I said, well, I, I had no idea that it was anything important because I was just helping out Bob. And then someone asked, well, did, did you, I heard you were in the, the outfit. And I said, well, yeah, I did one shot. And said, oh, then you did Leatherface. I said, well, I didn't do Leatherface. I'm not taking credit for it. Bob Elmer did the whole movie. I'm not going to say I was Leatherface. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you, you were it. <laughs> so you're the guys that said I did all three. I don't. <laughs> Talk about being in the right place at the right yeah, time. Yeah, I know. I just luck. You, you know, you fall into stuff. with stuntmen do that, you know. <laughs> nice. Any questions so far? Well, I'll ask Melanie oh, one more. Melanie, okay. um, so you quit acting for a while and recently started coming back to it. I never quit. I went to New York. I was doing a lot of theater, oh, okay. which nobody knew about. Uh, and I'm a dancer, so I did that. Uh, the truth is... <laughs> if I want to get into the down and dirty. It is coming out in a book. Um, after I finished Friday the 13th, I was doing other work, and I was asked to go to an audition by Harvey Weinstein. And I went to his office at Miramax. Long story short, because I'm writing a book, and it'll be in there. It did not go well. He ripped my clothes off. I left. Before I left, he said to me, if you tell anybody that this has happened, you'll never work again. And I went home. St I don't remember driving home. I, I was half naked. I don't remember driving home. I was so stunned. And I got home, and I called my agent, who sent me to the audition. And I told him what had happened. And he kind of went in shock over the phone. And he said, well, what did you do to make him do that? Right. So I said I went to an audition. 
I did not know he was going to lock the door and rip my clothes off. So my agent said, you can't tell anybody, blah, 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 blah. I said, well, I think I need to tell somebody. He said, if you do, this will ruin the agency, it will ruin everything. I said, I want to call the union Screen Actors Guild. And he said, no. So I had three agents on me saying, you can absolutely take this to your grave. You can't tell anybody what has happened. So I went by the rules of what everybody wanted me to do. And he still blacklisted me for 10 years. So I was not allowed to work for almost 10 years, except Paramount cast me. So I have a soft spot for Paramount. I did Cheers, I did some other shows, but yeah. So I didn't quit. <laughs> so your white teacher did more than what you realized. <laughs> yeah. So that's that story. Uh, I have a question real quick for, for both of you. Uh, when you're not working, what do you like to do? Do you have hobbies that, you know, takes up some of that free time? Actually, when you're not working, you're pursuing work. You're trying to find work. <laughs> So it's a vicious circle, you're saying, well, sir. Yeah, it, I mean, uh, it, you're, you're, you're constant. when we first started, I mean, as a stunt guy, I'd be at the studios, I'd go to Universal Studios, and a lot of the guys would meet at the commissary, and we'd get call sheets, and the call sheets shows all the action, or wherever it is, we get all the call sheets for the shows that are being put, done, some are on the stages, some are on locations, and we spend our, our day trying to get to the stage, trying to get in to see, a, see the coordinator and give them our picture and tell them who we are or going on location finding them and, and just you know you're out trying to get a job so you did a lot of that and then of course there's for us there's always training and uh, you, you learn high falls you learn fights you learn scuba diving you ride horses you do there's so many things to do that you're always training with some of your friends when you're young and starting out and we used to train Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays at a at a gym down in Santa Monica, and then we'd go out to uh, another guy's place. His name was Bob Yerkes. He was a circus guy. He came into the to uh, the stunt world through circus, so he had a whole circus rig and uh, flying stuff and towers and stuff. We'd do all our falls over there. So we were always busy trying to learn something new and and uh, get in into the business. So that's what we spent our time doing in between. In between jobs, yeah, you're training for other stuff. And also, um, like Tom said, you're always looking for work. So actually looking for work is a full-time job as an actor, right? The way, yeah, you got to be, as they say, you got to be lucky. And the way you're lucky, you're everywhere all the time yeah. doing stuff. Yeah. yeah, you have to be ready and you have to be talented. You know, you have to constantly hone your abilities so that when you're in the right place at the right time, you can deliver. And to be in the right place at the right time, is be everywhere all the time. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask a follow-up question, Tom? Um, as a, as a stunt performer, um, was there a stunt that you were like, oh, okay, I'll do it, but it's not one of your favorites? Oh, sure. I mean, there's, there's, there's things you really like to do, there's things that you're not really excited about doing, that you, you know, but you do them. It's just like any other job, you know, and uh, there's been... Uh, I, I kind of like the things I do physically, fights and falls and stuff. I'm, I, I drive cars, I do car work, but that's not really my favorite. A lot of guys just love to get into cars and crash, yeah. which is okay, and I've done stuff, I've done turnovers, I've done all, you know, my share of stuff, but uh, when it comes to the physical things, when you're up high and you're, and you're fighting and you're swinging on a rope or you're sword fighting, that's the kind of stuff I really like. Wow. I've been fortunate to do a lot of that. It's scary. Was there ever a, uh, a stunt that you were like, yeah, no, I'm not going? Uh, yeah, one time there was a motorcycle gag they wanted me to do, and I said, well, I can try it, but I said, I'm not really that good on a bike. I'd maybe get a biker guy to do that, so I, I pass it on. Mm -hmm. But uh, rarely. I mean, I, I trained all the time. Like I said, I was always doing something. So, And then uh, stunt coordinators are the guys that uh, uh, the head of the department, and he's the guy. When you're a coordinator, you you're looking at the uh, script. You got all, all the stunts. You broke it all down. Okay, I need a guy to do a high fall. Here, it's got to be a 60 footer. Who am I going to get? Well, is he? There's uh, Charlie and Jack, and those are the ones that can do the high high falls. I'll call one of those. 
so you don't always get a call. You know, you, if, if you're not known as being one guy for this, this gag that they're doing, it might be a little tricky. If you're not known for that, you're not going to get the call. You got to go out and hustle for it and get people to say, oh, yeah, you get, you get lit on fire? Oh, yeah, I've done fire gags. Oh, okay, well, let me see a picture. Okay, all right, I'll use you. <laughs> Melanie, what was it like working on Broadway? I was off Broadway. I did, I did Broadway shows, but on tour. Okay. So I did, yeah, yeah. I did Greece on tour. I wasn't on Broadway, but I did off Broadway. I, I come from New York City area, so my whole beginning of of show business and training was singing, dancing, and I always wanted to be in Broadway musicals. So that was a thrill for me, and I finally got to do it. And I got to work with some great people, Ben Vereen, and I don't know if you people know who that is, but you know, I got to work with some great people, and I did some great tours and saw the country. Uh, but the thing that got me into acting, I always wanted to be an actress, but I figured my way in was singing and dancing. And it was. And then what really changed it for me was I did a Dr. Pepper commercial. And it was in the era in the 70s where it was all singing and dancing. And they shot this thing for three days like a Broadway show. And it was a 60 minute com 60 second commercial, which they don't do anymore. And it told a story. I played a prom queen. And there was a whole song and a dance routine with a whole chorus behind us for Dr. Pepper. From doing that, I, I started getting work as an actress just from that commercial. So that's how I started. Any questions? So uh, uh, so what's the worst injury you got? Say that again. So what's like the worst injury you got doing the stuff? Uh, worst injury? Mm. Uh, I've not had any real bad injuries. I've been fortunate. I did a, a horse scene once that put me out of work for about a week or so. But uh, I was on a bucking horse in a scene for a man from Atlantis, if you remember oh, yeah. that show. He was supposed to be uh, in a western thing and so he's in this corral and he gets on this horse and it bucks him off well the horse was not a real bucking horse you know it was a cast horse and they had to flank him to make him buck so he had to pull the flank strap to get him to buck well that put me near the rail and when I got bucked off I hit the rail went outside and fell on the uh, outside the corral well they have these lights they call them nine lights and they're great big stands of lights that have nine bulbs in them yeah. and it was standing outside the corral and so when I fell I hit the ground next to the nine light and the director says great that looked good but we saw the nine light let's do that again oh. I says he says yeah I want you to do the same thing outside I said well I'll, I'll tell the horse <laughs> he wants me to take you over here and so I forced as best I could to get the horse over to the, to the rail again and he hit me into the rail and I went over the rail and when I hit the ground of course I'd already smashed my thigh and when I got home it swelled up and I couldn't work for about a week because it was I knew I didn't break anything but it really swelled so I had to, I had to lay off a little bit but uh, it didn't stop me completely so you had no broken bones in your whole career uh, yeah I broke a foot oh, so that's a, a big deal bone. yeah I was doing a bike thing but that wasn't because I was a lot of times you get hurt practicing and I was out racing some dirt bikes, you know, with my friends, working on your, you know, your abilities. Yeah. And uh, I went off the bike and over the rail, and the bike came over and jumped on me. <laughs> so, nothing serious, but I've had some scary ones. As a matter of fact, that, that one I told you about on, on uh, a chainsaw, I was on the, I'm standing on the edge of the, of the bed of the truck. And that means you're standing on the edge of the metal. And the only way I could stay there is because I have a harness with a cable, and the cable's from my back of my harness to the other side of the truck. So if you lean out, you can force your feet and keep yourself on the edge of that truck. Leaning out with this chainsaw, that should keep you from falling into the street. But if you were to relax, your feet would go out, and you'd probably hit the ground, and it'd be like a cement hook. So you had to push real hard and get out there and hold this thing. And as we were doing the shot, the first time I'm on the truck, well, these guys have been doing it all day long, so they're pretty used to it. And he gets going across the bridge, and when he gets to the end of the bridge, the, the road turns a little bit, and they have big lights to keep it lit, and it's getting just starting to get a little bit dark. 
and he couldn't see the turn right away, so he hit the brakes. But he hit the brakes just enough. I'm we're going 20 or 30 miles an hour. I'm still going that fast. And so I'm flying off the back of the truck over the tailgate. The cable stops me, and I hit the ground. And fortunately, he stayed on the brakes, so we all came to a stop together. <laughs> so I didn't get run over, but it was a little scary. And you went back for more. Well, I had the rest of the show. <laughs> Gotta get that picture. All right, any other questions? What you're doing, whatever, wouldn't that just open the door for you? What? Like when you do Michael Meyer, don't you just go, hey, we need another guy? That Actually, no. Uh, if you know, if you watch the movies, they always get another stunt guy yeah, for most yeah. of them. I mean, Kane Hodder did about four of them, but that was unusual. Right. And um, most of the time, they get a new stunt guy because. If you're a producer and you're making a movie uh, and you're going to cast all the people, you've got, you got this character who doesn't say anything, all he does is action, so you just get a stunt guy. And you're not going to promote the same stunt guy every time and make him a big star, then you have to pay him more money, right? So they get a new guy every day. Basically. It's all about money, let me tell you. <laughs> it is, it's all about money. I've never heard it put that way before, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Kane Hodder became huge. Yeah, he became a back. pretty big star, and then I guess they passed on him. And, and James Jude Courtney now, he was the character, and they showed him, so they had to use him. Now, he's done a few of those, and he's he's somebody, you know. He's he's now a, a star of, of Michael Myers. What, what advice would you two have for somebody that comes and says, I want to be in show business? Ooh. Oh, yeah, I hear that all. What, go ahead. Give us the acting side. Yeah. Well, you have to really love, first of all, you have to have self-confidence, believe in yourself, and have uh, a drive to do it. Most people drop out. The ones that don't stay in till the end, like me, I stayed in till the end. It's, it's an obsession. It's a, you're driven to do it. It's all you want to do. That has to be number one, because it's a very, very difficult business. Number two, believe in yourself. Number three, never let anybody tell you you can't do it. Just keep going forward. Anything you're doing in any walk of life, you just keep going forward because there will be obstacles. People will tell you you can't do it. Yes, you can. Yeah, you're your, you're your best critic and you don't, as far as a stunt guy goes, I mean, when I started, I was older. I wasn't like a young 20-year-old. And the first person I talked to about this is, oh, no, you're too old. You won't be able to do that. But I remember the day I first started as a stunt guy training. And I went to this class. It was a stunt school in Santa Monica. And I was walking up to the door of this little gym. And I saw a couple of people waiting outside before it opened up. And I looked at them. And I thought, my God, these are the people who going to know the rest of my life. And so did I turn this off? Yeah. Uh, I said, those are the people I'm going to know the rest of my life. I had no idea why I said that, but it was something in my head that clicked, and I said, well, I'd never quit trying. And that's the point. It, there's a, there are just so many barriers to doing something, and that has to do more than just, just acting or, or movie business. If you've got something you want to do, and you say, hey, I, that's the kind of thing I want to pursue, you do it. And you'll eventually get there if you believe in yourself. And that's that's way. If you if you have the ability, if you have a if you have a, a athletics enough, or in your act, action uh, action or so, how should I say it? You got to have the natural ability, physical ability, and if you have it, then just keep working, and you can be a stunt guy. Was there a particular movie that maybe you saw when you were younger that made you guys want to do this, or performance, or? Mine, I, like I said, I wanted to be an actress and a singer and dancer, so I don't know if you remember him. He's my idol, Dick Van Dyke, still oh, yeah. alive. He is my all-time idol. He could do everything. I grew up three years old watching him. I studied everything he did. The other person was uh, Julie Andrews. Oh, yeah. I studied everything she did. I've met so many of my idols in show business. So see only two I haven't met. So I'm still working on meeting Dick Van Dyke. He's a, almost a hundred, but he's still running around Hollywood, and I and I know I eventually will see him. But uh, talk about an inspiration! This guy had so many obstacles, but he also had a lot of good luck, and he he kept going. He kept going. He's still working. So. Now 
Are you still doing everything? He's still working. Yeah, he's always been. I think when I saw the Three Musketeers, yeah. I, 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 what that'd be so great to do a sword fight and swing on ropes and stuff. And I finally did some of the uh, Caribbean Pirates of the Caribbean movies, so I got four of those in. And when I'm doing them, I'm thinking, hey, I remember this when I was a kid. <laughs> This isn't horror related, but I have to ask, because you did some stunt work for Crowd and Child. So my question is, what kind of stunt work goes into like a comedy? Oh, there's a lot of, it. I mean, just like the Three Stooges, <laughs> you know, yeah. they do a lot of comedy stunts, and, and uh, there's banana peels and Falls, all those kind of things are fun and funny, you know, and, and, and <laughs> pie fights. fights. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I've had a situation where you walk through a brawl, in a bar, and you're not hit, and then at the end you get hit, <laughs> and stuff like that. Okay. Hey guys, questions? Did you ever get to do something like the ball guy or any of those type of things? Oh yeah, I've done a lot of different ones. You you were saying that you Ben Vereen? I worked with Ben Vereen. Yeah, I did Ten Speed and Brown Shoe. Oh, okay. You remember that show? Yeah. I doubled for Jeff Goldblum, okay. and Ben Vereen was in it. So ben Vereen's a great actor. Yeah, He's still he working. Good. I just did a movie with him. Yeah. yeah. We shot in Bucharest, Romania. That's it's cool. uh, coming out this later next year. It's uh, Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman and Ben Vereen, and I have a role in it. So. Good, good, good. That's a cast. That's a great cast, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, anybody else have any questions? Uh, from Don, uh, I mean, you've done so much over your career that's been great, but do you feel like pigeonholed family-wise? Because it seems like... Most of the attention comes from like Friday the 13th. Yeah, it's funny. I, I didn't realize that until I started doing conventions. I, I'm very grateful for the fans. I did not know that Friday the 13th, I have all the things. Nobody cares about anything else I've done. So, But that's okay because I'm grateful that they care about this movie. Uh, the fans are loyal. Uh, they bring, it's generational. They bring their kids, their grandparents, you know. So it's touched people in many different ways that I didn't think was possible. So that's been a great joy and I'm grateful for that. And people come to me at conventions and tell me stories about how Pam Roberts helped them get through a bad childhood or a bullied at school or uh, you know, abusive parents. Some of the stories would blow your mind. And so it, it's meant a lot to me to meet the fans and hear their stories and to be able to um, have had some kind of positive influence in their life with such a, a movie that I would have never thought would touch anybody, you know? I thought it was all about Jason killing people. I didn't even know anyone was paying any attention to me. And uh, they weren't. So it's it's a blessing. Yeah, she's still alive in the franchise, too, so you need to get them to bring her back. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I was supposed to come back and do part six. I was signed for both movies. Uh, John Shepard and I were signed to do five and six. We got paid, but as you know, six didn't happen. We had a break, we wrapped part five. We had a month or two off. In that time, they were developing the script and they sent me preliminary script. And then, I'd say about a month before we were supposed to start shooting, I got a phone call from Paramount, my agent, saying John Shepard doesn't want to do horror anymore. He's a born-again Christian and he's against all of this. I said, well, I can do it just get another they said well no we're thinking we have to change the story because it's not going to make any sense with you by yourself and there's no Tommy so that's what happened to that unfortunately um, yeah I never knew that story yeah 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 so it was a depressing summer to get that news that I wasn't going to be doing part six and they said well we're paying you anyway which was nice but you know when you're an actor you want the job you don't care about the money at that point Fast forward, all these years later, I had a grudge against Tom, I, uh, uh, against uh, John. I saw him at a convention January a year ago, and he turned to me and he said, you know, I made a mistake. I almost punched you. It took you 39 years to realize you screwed me. You screwed me. Well, I've come to my senses now. I said, well, it's too late. Have a nice life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's always bad when you're supposed to do something and you don't get it. Yeah, and he had a month to, you know, come on. <laughs>
you wait till a month before we're going to do this and say this. He knows how I feel. I'm not, if you run into him somewhere and you bring it up, he'll say, yeah, yeah, I did that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's a big wow. Mic drop. <laughs> I'm not bitter. <laughs> All right, any question, other questions? All right, Melanie, Tom, thank you guys thank so much you. for Thanks. taking the time. Thank you. You're the reason we're here. Thank you to you guys for showing up. And Just like you always say, uh, we've all done tons of things. I've done so many things. I was sure this is going to be a hit. I doubled John Travolta once in, in uh, his show with Olivia Newton-John after Greece. It was going to be the biggest hit in the world, and it turned into a flop, so nobody heard that one. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. So there's, you know, so this one did this to us. And, and we're grateful. We're really grateful for your interest all these years and your loyalty. It, it does mean a lot. Thank you.